Hi all in this video we are going to discuss about the effect of friction in nozzles nozzle efficiency and super saturated flow through steam nozzles we already discussed about the basics of steam nozzles in my previous videos the link of those videos are given in description okay let us start with effect of friction in nozzle in ideal case the expansion in nozzle is isentropic that is process 1 to 3s as shown in figure but actual expansion through nozzles is not isentropic because of the irreversibility at the surface of flow and within the fluid itself these irreversibilities are due to friction between fluid and wall surface of nozzle friction within the fluid itself and also due to flow suppression in nozzle for a convergent divergent nozzle the convergent portion of the nozzle is smaller than divergent portion therefore wall friction and friction within the fluid is small in convergent portion than in divergent portion flow suppression occurs when the angle of divergence is made too large which creates strong turbulence near the nozzle wall thus the included angle of the divergent portion is usually kept at 20 degree from the figure process 1 to 3s is ideal case of flow through nozzle which is isentropic and final state is 3s but in actual case because of the irreversibilities in divergent part of the nozzle entropy increases and final state is 3 nozzle efficiency is the ratio of actual enthalpy drop to the isentropic enthalpy drop therefore nozzle efficiency equals h1 minus h3 by h1 minus h3s following are the effects of friction in nozzle reduction in enthalpy drop reduction in exit velocity reheating of fluid decrease in mass flow rate and increase in specific volume of steam we can also express nozzle efficiency as the ratio of actual kinetic energy at a nozzle exit to the kinetic energy at a nozzle exit for isentropic flow at the same exit pressure therefore nozzle efficiency equals v3 squared by v3s squared nozzle velocity coefficient it is the ratio of actual velocity at a nozzle exit to the velocity at nozzle exit with isentropic flow at the same exit pressure that is cv equals v3 by v3s that is the square root of nozzle efficiency coefficient of discharge is the ratio of actual mass flow rate to the mass flow rate with isentropic flow therefore cd equals m dot by m dot s okay next is super saturation consider isentropic expansion of a superheated steam in a convergent divergent nozzle from state 1 which is at pressure p1 to state 2 which is at pressure p2 the change of phase should start at point c where the expansion line meets the saturation line but condensation does not occur at point c because of the high velocity of steam and there is no sufficient time for necessary heat transfer and formation of liquid droplets so the condensation of vapor is delayed for a while this phenomenon is known as super saturation of steam the vapor continue to expand in dry condition even beyond point c such an expansion is called super saturated expansion the point at which condensation occurs may be within the nozzle or after the vapor leaves the nozzle in the figure condensation begins at point p the vapor between point c and point p is said to be superheated and also in metastable state such type of flow in nozzles is known as super saturated or metastable flow a limit to the super saturated flow is fixed by wilson line and this line is the saturation line for all practical purposes process pq represents condensation and qr represents expansion after condensation following are the effects of super saturation exit velocity is reduced super saturation increases specific volume and entropy of steam actual heat drop is slightly reduced super saturation increases dryness fraction of steam okay i hope you understood all the topics 
If you like the video, subscribe my channel and click the bell icon also. Thank you.